All right, guys. Well, you may have been walking around a prairie sometime recently. I don't know if you have, but you probably should. And you've seen this orange stringy stuff, this orange stringy stuff growing over everything. It looks like some vile alien organism that's going to, to pull you in as soon as you touch it and, and, and inject you with digestive enzymes with which it will digest you uh, in the open air. But it won't do that. I, I promise you, I, I seriously, I, you know, I confronted this myself already. I really put some thought into it, and I don't think that's the case. What I'm pretty sure it is, is cuscutus, cuscutus, cuscutus. All right, you know, just imagine a blend between the word couscous and Calcutta, and you basically get what I'm talking about. This is a really, really remarkable hollow parasitic plant in the family Convolvulaceae. Convolvulaceae, that's right, that's morning glories. This doesn't look like a morning glory to you, huh? No, it, not really. In fact, for a short time, uh, taxonomists were putting it in its own family, but it, it was replaced back into Convolvulaceae. Now, you can look up real close and you see these flowers, they do have the same structure of a morning glory with that five-lobed corolla and the five little, you, know, you see those things, yeah, yeah. You see the five anthers sticking out, yep, that's, that's a morning glory. All uh, contained within a very small bract. And these guys do have bracts, but they're very hard to see. These flowers are much stiffer than you'd expect. Now this is a specific species of Cuscuta called, uh, you know, you know, I actually, I actually don't know. Uh, this, this is glomerata, Cuscuta glomerata. Now, we have a lot of other species around here. You might see Campestris or Polygona or something like that. But uh, this one is the most, or arguably the most easily to, uh, identifiable. It's also known as rope uh, dotter, and dotter being the common name for this genus, because it forms these thick ropes around the stems of the plants that it attacks. Many uh, species of Cuscutus specialize with their own array of plants on which they make their diet. Uh, this one in particular, Cuscutus glomerata, targets Asteraceae plants, particularly a few species within Solidago, which is what we got right here, uh, as well as Helianthus grisaceratus, which is that, uh, that tall guy. You see that one? Not this tall guy, but that tall guy. So. And that's really good for us. That's really good news. I am so happy. Thank you, Cuscutus glomerata, because some native species uh, actually are capable of becoming invasive. Now, Helianthus grisaceratus is no exception. It's kind of a thug plant, and it specializes in areas where soil conditions are disrupted. So it would usually occur in areas where soil had been moved, it would occur in the transition between two different soils. So like over there, we have the Markham Ashcombe silt loams and uh, transitioning into Elliott silt loams. And along that transition, you would get Helianthus grisaceratus, which is exactly what we have. It's flanking our oak savanna. And Helianthus grisaceratus is a huge thug. When it's a perennial sunflower, and when it's allowed to go off, it goes off. That's why in the northern part of our prairie, you see nothing but it and a few select thuggish solidago species. Now, nothing wrong with being a thug, okay? You gotta hustle whatever you gotta hustle. But in the case, in the context of the prairie, what I mean by thug might be better described as colonists. They just come in in droves and replace everything that was there before. Um, and they're particularly successful in that northern part of the prairie because it was tilled. So you get soil disturbance which is perfect habitat for Helianthus grisaceratus. That is why our Cuscuta are an excellent biological control. Now, some Cuscuta species are very generalist or are at least capable of some very ruderal habitats. This is not one of those. This Cuscuta has a C value that is a conservatism value of nine. Like, you know, out of 10. So <laughs> that's a very special plant right here, this rope dotter. Cuscuta glomerata uh, can only occur in wet mesic prairies and fens. 
wherein there occurs Solidago and, uh, and Helianthus grisesseratus. It's a pretty specific array of ecosystems, and those ecosystems are incredibly rare. So just despairingly rare. Dear God, I feel so bad for you, Cuscuta, as well as lots of other plants here. Cuscuta, though, is a hollow parasite as opposed to a hemiparasite. You might know uh, Pedicularis or Castellagia, both members of the family Orobanchaceae, which is entirely comprised of hemiparasites. Now that's in the order Lamiales. This is a hollow parasite, so hemiparasites can photosynthesize. They have chlorophyll, they'll have green on their leaves, and they can uh, produce some of their own energy and supplement for more micronutrients from other plants. This is a hollow parasite, so it entirely relies on uh, other plants for everything from carbohydrates to micronutrients. So this is, uh, and it is quite a fascinating mechanism of growth. You can't see it at this time of year, but they'll drop a seed down there from those flowers once they are pollinated by one of about uh, eight to 10 species of bees, depending on the specific habitat. In Chicagoland, that can vary if you're in a sandy region or a silty region, for example. And they'll drop seeds down in the soil. The soil, the, the seeds germinate and develop a very elementary, very, very simple root structure. It's pretty much just structural. And uh, what this plant thus does is quite amazing. It, this plant can sniff. This plant can smell you out like a bloodhound. So some of the species in Cusco to rely entirely on uh, species within Lemiaceae, that's mints. Others on Solanaceae, that's your potatoes and tomatoes. And what they do is they seek out the volatile organic compounds that are released by these. Volatile organic compounds are one of several classes of compounds along with terpenes and such. They produce a lot of the smells. It's your essential oils, your snake oils and shit. So the uh, volatile organic compounds are constantly being emitted into the air and Cuscuta sniffs them out. Some plants, especially in Solanaceae with their specific, ho uh, with their specific parasites of Cuscuta, actually will set off different volatile organic compounds in response to a Cuscuta invasion just to throw it off its scent, kind of like covering yourself in mud to, uh, to avoid bloodhounds, which doesn't work. If you're, if you're running from the law, don't do that. You're wasting your time. Keep running. Keep running, man. You, you got this, okay? Anyway, um, once it uh, gets up the plant, though, self-prunes that uh, elementary root structure which will disappear and then it produces a massive mat that travels throughout everything and look you can just reach your hand into it and it's not digesting me thank god it's not an alien this is a real plant and uh, it uses these little nice mechanisms called hostoria so it has no leaves the leaves have been reduced to tiny tiny little scales that are almost imperceptible but many of those leaves have uh, modified evolutionarily into Hostoria, so that's why if I peel this away a little bit, you see it takes a bit of the stem with it. It causes a wound. That's because the Hostoria on there, they're not just attaching themselves to the plant, they are growing into the plant. Lots of fungi have Hostoria too. This is how they, uh, this is how they develop mycorrhizal relationships with plants, is because they can just delve right inside the plant. Uh, ooh, kinky, huh? Yeah. Mm. I, I wouldn't want that happening to me, but you know, if that's your thing, I can't judge. Now, once they get there, they're going to steal every nutrient that they can from the plant, and that severely stunts the plants, which is awesome when we're talking about Helianthus grisesseratus, Solidago ohioensis, or Gigantia, or the, the various other species. I'm not going to go into it. There's like 200 species of Solidago or something in the Midwest. So you get the point. It severely stunts them and can even kill them and prevent them from flowering even. However, that is not always the case, as in some species of Cuscuta, now not every species have been studied, they have uh, abandoned so much of their own genetic material in order to be able to live on and within other species of plants without their immune systems defeating them. Uh, so they, in order to do that, they actually steal DNA from some of these plants. So in some species, they can steal the DNA from a flower, which will then tell it when it's time to flower. It uses the information of that plant to decide when it's going to flower instead of the host plant flowering. You get what I'm saying here? So 
This is not the case for Glomerata, it seems, because Solidagos and Helianthuses are not blooming right now. And uh, as you can see, Glomerata is in full swing. But that is the case for some, and it's quite amazing. So this is really a fascinating plant. It's this fungi-like parasitic plant. Pretty much abandoned all standards for plant structure, plant DNA, plant behavior, uh, in exchange of being just a total mooch, just a complete gold digger. And I love it. God, I love these little, these little divas, huh? Yeah, you're a little diva. Ooh, that's, you're a little diva too, yeah. Okay, bye. Not only are they an effective biological control for certain thuggish plants, they specialize in absorbing a few specific compounds from these plants, micronutrients that are scarce, but absolutely essential to plant life. That's phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. It specializes in absorbing these from the plants that it inhabits, which often include Fabaceae, like Desmodium over there. Desmodium's in the pea family Fabaceae, which are particularly nitrogen rich. Um, and like I said, some species specialize in Lemiaceae and some in Solanaceae, these guys with Asteraceae. Nonetheless, these compounds get, uh... oh, hi there, honey. I'm talking about Cuscuda, you wanna come here? It's really cool. It's really fucking interesting. Are you gonna come down here and learn? You know, this isn't your territory. You really should leave, you're trespassing. All right, you know, all right, you know, do your thing. Anyway, so because they particularly target these three nutrients, when the massive mats of Cuscuta that form finally die off and decay, as they are in fact annual, when they die off and decay, not only are they taking all of the carbon and everything else that compose these massive Asteraceae plants with them, but they're taking all of that phosphorus and potassium and nitrogen from those plants that otherwise would have been stored in their perennial rootstocks and distributing it to the soil for other plants to use next year instead of, you know, years and years from now. So when you have a consistent population of Cuscuta, and by the way, this year, just like everything else, as you can see, Cuscuta is doing absolutely wonderfully, blowing it out of the water, along with prairie dock and culver's root and arquinine and just uh, countless other plants. The prairie's never looked like this before. So Cuscuta's having a blast, having an absolute field day, just killing, ruthlessly, savagely, murdering everything in its path. And uh, as it does so, it's returning in great excess of micronutrients, very hard to come by micronutrients, to the dirt to be used next year so that the prairie can thrive again, just like this. So thank you, Cuscuta, for your service. I didn't ask you for it. No one asked you for it. In fact, a lot of people are afraid to touch you, and a lot of people have no idea what you are. Some people think you're a fungus. Some people think you're an alien. I think you're a fucking badass, all right? And if you don't think that Cuscuta is some of the coolest shit in the world, then get the fuck out of here, all right? Uh, thanks.